In this video we're going to take a look on the admin perspective of Empower Document Automation in version 9.3. Document automation can be used with Empower for PowerPoint or with Empower for Word. And generally speaking, document automation enables you to create and individualize a whole document, respectively presentation, by answering several predefined questions in the document automation wizard. As an admin, you're able to create the document automation template and the corresponding wizard. And how you can do this is what I'll show you in this video. First of all, we'll start in the Empower library. Document automation templates have this symbol in the library. When I double click on this template or select it and click on open, the wizard opens up so that the user is able to create an individualized document with it. If you'd like to get further information on how to create a document with a document automation wizard from the user's perspective, you can find it in a separate video that covers this topic. But when I right click on the template as an admin, I have the additional option to select edit template, which we're going to do right now. You can see that the template is opening where I can work on several elements to modify it. You can find the document automation menu in the Empower ribbon right here. If I want to create a new template, I can simply use an existing document as a starting point or create a new one. I'll use this presentation and open it. Then I can create the wizard, conditions, etc., which we're going to take a look on in a minute. In the Document Automation section of the Empower ribbon, you can find the button Save Template right here, where you can save the template in the Empower library and either edit it later on or create a document with it. Now we'll create a simple template and while doing so, I'll show you the basic functionalities of Empower Document Automation. The basic principle of creating a template is to firstly define a question in the Wizard Designer. If necessary, I have to create an automation field in my document that is connected to the question. And depending on the question, I also have to create several conditions that define when which content that is present in the template shall be shown in the automated document that the user creates later on. You'll get to know how all of this works in this video. Let's have a look on the wizard designer. Here you can design the questionnaire that the user will see when they open the template. You can see the different kinds of questions that can be used in the wizard. Let's start with a simple text input question. Firstly, I have to give the question a name. In this example, I'll use the name author because I want to ask the user to type in the document's author's name. Then I have the possibility to define if this question should be required. When a question is required, the user cannot create a document with a template if the question is unanswered. Required questions are marked with an asterisk in the wizard. Now I click on save to save the question which is now part of the document automation wizard. The next thing I want to do is to define the place where the answer of the question should be inserted into the presentation. As you can see, I already prepared this slide and want the author's name to be inserted right here. Therefore, I simply right click where I want the automation field to be created. Then I select insert field right here and select the corresponding question. Press on OK. And now you can see that this field is created right here. Another possibility that I have to insert a document automation field is to navigate to this split button in the document automation menu and click on the button insert field. Here I can also manage all of the fields that I created, see where they're located, create new ones, insert them, edit or delete them. The next questions I want to define concern the respective client. First of all, the user shall be able to decide if they want to tailor the presentation to the client at all. This is why I add a yes-no question at first, which would be, do you want to tailor the presentation 
to the client. Here I can select the initial value, which means what should be pre-selected in the wizard later on. If this is a question that is most likely to be answered by yes, you can choose that here. Moreover, I can define if the question shall be answered by clicking on a checkbox or by moving a toggle. A toggle is something like that. And if I want it to be displayed as a checkbox, I would switch that toggle on. The following questions concern the client's name and logo. Additionally, I want these to be dependent questions that depend on the formal question. This is why I click Add Dependent Question. So if the user answered, yes, I want to tailor the presentation to the customer, they have the option to insert the client's name and logo. So I create the question client name. and add another dependent question. And to work with dependent questions is very useful to keep the wizard clearly arranged. The next question is about the client logo, which is why I'll use the picture type question and give the user the possibility to insert the client logo as an image right here. Click on save and now these questions are saved. Now I'll insert the necessary fields that are needed for these last questions. The client name field works similarly to the field of the document author. So I'll use the button in this case and select the right question, which would, which would be client name and click on OK. To define the location where the client logo shall be inserted, I can simply click on this placeholder because the logo should be inserted right here. Then click on the Insert Field button and select the right question once again. You can also see the type of the question right here. Click on OK. Another possibility would be to put a shape on my slide anywhere I want and then insert the field on the selected shape so that the image will be inserted in the, sh in the shape. In the template I'm creating, the user should have the possibility to present one of the company's solutions. But as there are multiple solutions, the user will have to choose which one they need. This should be a single choice question, because only one solution shall be presented. Here yeah, I can type in the options that the user has, which would be brand control and content creation in this example. I can delete options that I already typed in by clicking on this little X. And moreover, you can see that I can change the questions order by these arrows if I want that. And I can delete the questions by clicking right here. Now I click on save once again. And corresponding to every solution, a specific set of slides should be inserted in the presentation. This is where I'll go to the Empower Library and right-click on the element that I need, which would be Brand Control at first, and click on Copy Link to Clipboard. And afterwards, I go back to my template and click on the split button Linked Slides and then on Insert Linked Slides. Now a new window opens up where I can paste the link that we've just copied. And you can see that the thumbnail of the respective element is shown, so you know if you have pasted the right link. And by clicking on OK, you can see that a preview of the linked slides is inserted, so you can easily see which slides will be inserted in which place. The same way I'm going to link the other presentation from the library real quick. Copy the link to the clipboard and insert it once again. Note that you can link single slides or whole presentations. The advantage of linking your slide or slides and not simply inserting them, which would be possible too, is that your tempo stays simple and well-ranged 
and that all of your linked slides stay up to date if the resource should be edited. In the Linked Slides Manager, you can have a look on all the linked slides and see where they're located, and also edit or delete them later on. The next thing I have to do is to define several conditions. The conditions are necessary so that the templates knows which contents have to be inserted based on the user's answers. Therefore, click on the button Manage Conditions. A new window opens up where I can create a new condition. Firstly, I have to give the rule a name. So I'm going to type in Show Brand Control Slides because this is what the condition is about. I have the possibility to add an AND or an OR to my rule. And this is why it is also possible to combine several conditions. But in this video, we'll stay with the simple examples. So I'll add an AND. And here I can select the question that the condition belongs to. I can further select is equal to or is not equal because we have a single choice question here. I'm going to use is equal to and then type in the option that we just used in the wizard designer, which would be brand control in this case. Now I can close this window, select the right slide and click on the button insert condition and use the fitting condition, which would be show brand control slides and press on OK. Another possibility would be to right click on the respective slide and select show conditionally. Now we're going to do the same with the second solution. So I'll create another condition in the condition manager, which would be show content creation slides, add an and, select the right question and type in the option from the wizard designer. Now I close this window once again and select the right slide, content creation, and insert the condition real quick. And in the condition manager, you can once again see the result and see where the condition is used on which slide. And you can also, of course, delete them or change the order of them. The last question I want to create is about references and shall be a multiple choice question. So the user has the possibility to choose which references shall be shown in the presentation. And it is possible to show one or several references So now I type in everything just the, the same way we've already seen with a single choice question. And save this multiple choice question. Then I'll go to the library once again and insert the reference slides that you can see right here one by one via links just the same way that we've already seen before. And do the same with the last slide and insert it after the DEX reference slides. And the next step is to create the conditions in the condition manager once again. So I go back there and create a new condition, which would be in this case, show DAX reference slide. I'll add an AND, select the right question once again. The only difference right here is that I can choose between contains and not contains because we have a multiple choice question where several options can be selected. So I create a new rule right, real quick. And 
add an ad once again and simply repeat the procedure. And lastly, we connect the slides and the conditions just the same way we've already done before. I can check this real quick in the manage conditions and see that everything worked out correctly. And now I only have to save the template to the library. And then, then I'll test the template by simply opening it from the library in order to see the user's perspective and to check the result. So here you can see the wizard that we just created. I can type in the author and the client's name. I'm not going to insert the logo, but you can see how this looks in the wizard. I choose which solution I want to show and which references shall be shown as well. I'm going to use both and click on create in order to create the document. And here you can see the author name was inserted correctly, as well as the client name. You can see that the correct slides were inserted concerning the solution and the reference slides. And Empower Document works quite similarly in Word. And this is what I'll show you right now. So as you can see, I opened this template that I already prepared in Word and you can find the document automation menu in the Empower ribbon as well. And you can see that it looks quite similarly to the one in PowerPoint. You can find the wizard designer right here and see that it looks quite the same. Moreover, you have the same option to insert fields and manage them right here. You can see the field of the author and where it is located. The condition manager looks like that too. And you can see the different fields look like that in Word. The only difference is that I can link a content block right here and not a slide from the library, which I'll show you real quick. So I go to the library and select this content block that I want to insert, right click on it, copy the link. So it's quite the same procedure as in PowerPoint and then click on, and then click on insert linked content block, insert the link, click on OK. And this is how I insert a content block. You can see where it is located in the Empower library. And now you know the basic functionalities of Empower Document Automation in PowerPoint and Word. And I hope this video helped you to understand how you can work with Empower Document Automation. Thanks for watching and goodbye.